All right, guys. So, don't you love it when uh, you have to do video twice because of some technical thing? <laughs> so, no matter how good this one is, the one that I lost was way, way, way better. But, uh, here we go. So, welcome to Timely Tuesdays. And uh, this time I'm going to talk about how how rare, just how rare are these Timely Comics? You know, you hear about them, you ask for them, you see them. Some, sometimes you get a chuckle and you ask a dealer. Uh, you know, I used to love doing that. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me see. You got any Timelies? And it was like, no, 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 no. I wish, I wish. And uh, then it got annoying because it was like, okay, I, I want to buy some. And that sucks. Uh, often... Uh, Sometimes you'll you'll they'll show you some and they're like oh well these are are mine, <laughs> so that's not fun either. But anyway, so the way the best way I guess to see how many of these are actually out there left in the world um, is from the CGC census. Which you can go to our website, and I don't know if you need to be a member or not, but I think you could join for free, at least. And then uh, you type whatever title it is, and then, uh, you know, you, you look in here and it tells you the totals. It's got the universal, restored, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's every copy that they ever graded. And the thing about that is, ah, oh, jeez, can't believe I have to go through all this again. All right, I'm done complaining about that. So the accuracy is based on the demand and the amount of money. That's it. So no one cares about like a title like that one on the bottom, Bravados Western. There's only one on the census. Someone might say, oh my God, it's so rare. There's only one on the census. But it's because no one cares. You're, no one's going to be sending that in to uh, for the usual reasons of like, I, hey, I want to sell this and make as much money as possible. So it's just so much easier if I grade it. There's no arguing. And then, uh, or... Hey, I have this in my collection. I want to insure it. Um, you know, <laughs> a 1.0 Amazing Fantasy uh, versus a 9.0 is, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's better to get it graded and then you can get insured. Or, uh, I mean, you know, some people do it for protection of the book or they uh, just think it looks good to have all their books graded uh, but you know most people aren't going to do that for a five dollar book so for these timelies that I'm going through this video in I only picked 34 of the pretty much the most sought after ones and it has to be at least a thousand dollars or roughly right around a thousand dollars to by a low grade. So if you see any of the books in here for under a thousand, take a good look. You might be getting an amazing deal. All right, so I'll move on to, and uh, I start at the highest uh, census numbers in each tier, and then I go to the lowest. So this is the 16 I, uh, in the what I call the classic tier, which is you know, you have to usually pony up at least a thousand to get one of these books. Here we go. Young Allies. Uh, this, this is a cool story about this cover. Is uh, There was an ad for this book uh, earlier. And um, I don't know how many months before it came out. But it actually had showed... Uh, him also punching Stalin um, from Soviet Union, uh, 
and uh, by the time this came out, um, I guess three months before, or however long they do for the cover in advance, but uh, Stalin had, or, you know, uh, Hitler double-crossed Russia, and uh, he was, they became our allies, so that was pretty interesting. It's cool to get that, I forget which book that is that has that on the back. I think it's a mystic, it might be Mystic Six. Hmm. I don't know. But um, a funny thing about that is that when uh, Simon and Kirby first showed Martin Goodman uh, the Captain America number one cover and they wanted to have him punching Hitler, Martin Goodman was worried that they wouldn't be able to get the book out fast enough because what if someone assassinated Hitler? Um so he really made them rush the book. Um, Simon actually was going to have uh, one or two other guys draw it with Jack Kirby, and Jack Kirby got mad and uh, was like, look, I'm going to pencil the whole thing. And uh, he did. And Simon said he was happy that it ended up that way. Um, and uh, as Simon said, I think in his book, uh, you know, well, what if Hitler was assassinated? That would have been uh, <laughs> maybe better. <laughs> but anyway, there's uh, 71 of these. Nice Kirby cover. 62. 60 USAs. That was USA 1, sorry. Cap... 13, only 58. Classic Crashing in the Berlin, 55 copies. Only 51 of these. 50, this classic cover. Only 47 Mystic Ones. 46 of these. Classic Hitler, 37. That is not a lot. I mean, that's not even enough for everyone in each... One person in each state wants one of these. Nope, sorry. Can't do it. 32. That's really low. 30. That one surprised me for sure. thought there was more of those. 29 of these, man. I really wish I didn't pass up on the, one of these. I could have got one about five years ago. Great cover. 28. And this is the lowest one. 17. That's <laughs> not a lot. And then, you know, that's all the grades. All the restored, all the qualified, all the blue. So... You know, you have to find the one that fits you. <laughs> find the one that's available. Find the one that uh, you can afford. Find the one that you like. <laughs> it's not easy. But that's part of what the fun of it. Here we go, uh, tier two. I call it a key tier. Uh, these books are going to cost you at least 2000 maybe 3000 to even get a low copy. So if you see it for less, definitely, definitely give it a good uh, look over. Make sure you're not passing up something amazing. Submariner number one. It's got a lot. One of the highest. 122. 106. Human Torch. Number one, essentially. 102 of these cap threes yeah you, I would think you're gonna definitely have to pay more than 3,000 for this these numbers are from Overstreet roughly I rounded up and down a little bit on some of them and you know Overstreet and that's they're saying it's for a 2.0 that's uh, I think that's low for almost all of them 94 
all winners won. All select, only 92. I was surprised about that. I mean, this cover is so iconic. I, uh, it's just, I don't know, strange how, how little there are. Cap 2, number 90, only 92. 46. 69. 62 of these guys. Only 48 of Submariner's first cover. Timely's first swastika on the cover. I, think, uh, I can't remember. Is this? This could be Jack Kirby's first cover for them. Red Raven, 44. Schaumburg's first cover. Joe Simon's first work. I believe it's... Wow, it's like the third or fourth timely book ever. This series didn't last long. Let's see, we got, uh, yep, 41. I don't know why it's okay. 41 of these. Marvel 2s. 37. Someone, yeah, this one is notoriously scarce. Uh, I read something the other day, and they're like, there's still one of the biggest mysteries is why did they change it from Marvel Comics, which is how it was in number one, to Marvel Mystery Comics. And why did he, he is Martin Goodman, publisher, why did he put the mysteries so small? It's weird. Maybe it had something to do with one of his weird tax uh, write-offs or something. He always did crazy stuff in the books. Okay, yeah, these are two that I don't usually consider when I'm thinking about Timelies, just because they're reprints, they're cover reprints, and then the insides are reprints. Uh, but they're really cool. They're uh, super rare. Look at that, only 12 and 11. On the census and they're at least 5k to buy at low grade i never i've seen maybe one of each ever um barely ever see them for sale and they're usually totally messed up and uh i mean they're square bound they're thick they're like they kind of look like pulps um i don't know if the paper is as bad as pulp I want to say no, but uh, it, it could be, and that's probably why they're so messed up. Because, I mean, yeah, I just can't imagine them lasting long if they're red. Like, a pulp is kind of more like a novel, and, you know, those all fall apart, but uh, very easily. <laughs> Mine are so, just, I never try to read them because they're just feels like they're gonna fall apart but uh the paper is just so bad and then uh, so i can imagine if these were read like just by kids and stuff uh, it would never last but yeah black and white and i've also seen them referred to as only being in canada sold in canada but that's i should research that more i guess but yeah i just put these like honorary because I don't really think of them. So then the three leftover mega keys. 49. I can't believe it's so low for this one. Crazy. A lot of people want the first superhero crossover. 166. This was once, at times, it was considered a. a a fairly common key, but uh, I've heard it uh, referred to lately as uh, just being a lot harder to get. I don't know if it's just because of the price or uh, people are just holding them on, holding on to theirs. I mean, wouldn't you hold on to it? I would. I can't believe there's only 61 of these. That is low. Very low. 
40k. Probably, you might, yeah, I don't know. Probably for a 2.0, you're going to pay a lot more than that. Definitely, I would say 25k for a 2.0 cap is, that's a great deal. Uh, now, if you added up all the totals of all those books, it's only 2,000, just about 2,000. That might sound like a lot, but, uh, you know, a lot of people own more than 2,000 comics. Imagine owning all the best timely keys would fit in your comic collection. It's not a lot. And you can compare it to uh, the 3,000 of <laughs> Amazing Fantasies created. So there's a thousand more of those. Then all those awesome timelies really puts it in perspective. And I think, uh, I mean, if you compare it to, like, uh, Incredible Hulk 181s, whew, uh, just a lot. But, uh, anyway, sorry, uh, this one was a little quick and snarky. I guess that's what happens when uh, you do the video twice. Maybe I'll have to do it a third time. I will. If, if, if that happens, I will. Alright? Just for you guys. Alright, see you next week. Take care.